So as we've seen from all the recent videos I've made, not all the top recruits in high school end up being NBA stars. Some of them don't even end up being NBA players. But normally there's a reason for that, whether it's major injuries or whether it's just the player getting out of shape or just being nowhere near as good as they were expected to be. But there's one player that it's hard to pinpoint the exact reason why he failed in the NBA, and that's Josh Selby. So before this video starts, we are doing a daily December. We are uploading a video every single day on this channel. The original goal was 25k by the end of the month. We actually smashed that by the 15th, and we actually then set a goal of 30k by Christmas. And right now, we are about 100 subscribers off 30k, so we could hit it tonight, which would be unbelievable. So a big thanks to everyone that subscribed recently, and if you guys have any ideas for videos, leave it in the comments. It's hard to think of an idea every day, and any ideas are greatly appreciated. So anyway, now let's get on to the video. So a lot of you guys probably don't know who Josh Selby is, and I wouldn't blame you, but seven years ago, he was expected to have been an NBA All-Star. In Josh Selby's senior year of high school, he averaged 32.7 assists, five rebounds, and two steals per game. He was a five-star recruit and was actually the number one ranked high school player according to Rivals.com. Selby originally committed to the University of Tennessee but decommitted in July 2009. In April 2010, he committed to the Kansas Jayhawks. Selby was suspended for the first nine games of his college career for receiving $4,600 of improper benefits. This is actually kind of a common theme if you think about it. Like the last three videos I've done on top ranked high school players you've probably never heard of. Renardo Sidney was suspended for receiving improper benefits and Cliff Alexander was suspended for something very similar. Because of this suspension and later a few injuries, Selby only played in 26 of the team's 38 games. And in 20.4 minutes per game that season, averaged 7.9 points, 2.2 assists, 2.2 rebounds per game, while only shooting 37% from the field, which is really bad. He started 11 of those 26 games. On April the 14th, 2011, he announced that he was going to declare for the NBA draft. Even though he was one of the top high school recruits in the nation, and while he didn't have a good college year, didn't have that bad a year in college, he still slipped all the way to the second round and was taken with the 49th pick in the 2011 NBA draft by the Memphis Grizzlies. A lot of people think that Avery Bradley was part of the reason why he slipped so far. Bradley was the number one high school recruit the year before, but after an average college year, he ended up going 19th to the Boston Celtics in the 2010 NBA draft. After his first year, Bradley looked like a bust, having spent more time in the D League than he did in the NBA. So a lot of people felt that something similar may have happened with Josh Selby. In one of those situations with Avery Bradley, he became a solid, solid NBA player, and the other with Josh Selby, he played less than 40 games in the NBA. In Selby's first season in the NBA with the Memphis Grizzlies, he only played in 28 games, and in February 2012, he was sent to the D League. In those 28 games, he averaged 2.3 points, 1.1 assists per game, while shooting 40% from the field and only 13% from three. However, after that season, Josh Selby decided to play in the NBA Summer League. It was here that he appeared to turn back the clock and show people why he was one of the best players in his high school class. Along with NBA All-Star Damian Lillard, Josh Selby was named co-MVP of the 2012 NBA Summer League. He averaged 24.2 points per game, 2.4 rebounds, 3.2 assists, and 2.5 and steals. He also shot 55.7% from the field and 64.3% from three, which is unbelievable, as well as nearly 90% from the line. He did this in only 27.4 minutes per game. He was nearly scoring a point per minute and doing it extremely, extremely efficiently. However, the next season he got even less playing time, only playing 10 games for the Memphis Grizzlies, averaging 5.9 minutes per game and only 2 points per game. On January 22, 2013, he was traded to Cleveland Cavaliers, where he was immediately assigned to their D-League affiliate to Canton Charge. On March 3, 2013, Selby was waived by the Cavaliers, and on March 7, he was acquired by the main red clause of the NBA D-League, which is now the NBA G-League. Since then, he's bounced around the world. In September 2013, he signed with a team in China, but was waived on November the 16th. On January the 7th, he signed for a team in Croatia, but on February the 5th, he parted ways with that team. In August 2014, he signed a one-year deal with a team in the Israeli Basketball League. In November 2015, he signed with a team in the Russian Second League. In August 2016, he signed for a team in the Top League in Turkey. However, he left after two months without playing in an official game for them. In January 12, 2017, he signed with a team in Israel and is currently playing in South Korea. So since the summer of 2013, when he was out of the NBA and the D-League, he has played for six total teams. Three of these teams he didn't even last two months playing for, and one of them he didn't play a single game for them. So what was the downfall of Josh Selby's career? It's hard to tell, 
because he showed in flashes that he was able to do everything that they said he couldn't do. A lot of people complained that he was a two guard in a point guard's body who couldn't really shoot the ball. At the same time through Summer League, shot nearly 60%. I know the intensity is different, but it still should be able to translate slightly. I've been trying to find any articles to say why he may not have been in the NBA, or why he's ended up playing for an average of more than a club a year since leaving the NBA, and I can't. The only thing I can find is a comment saying that he had a chip on his shoulder and wasn't a great locker room guy, but a random comment on a Reddit thread is hardly a credible source. So what actually happened to Josh Selby? I've got no idea. Maybe he just wasn't good enough, maybe it was an attitude problem, or maybe there was something else at play. Leave in the comments what you think, and if anyone knows more about this situation, I'd love to hear it, because I've been researching for about two or three hours just to see if I can find anything about this guy, and really it's difficult. There doesn't seem to be any reason why he didn't succeed in the NBA, and especially why he hasn't succeeded since leaving the NBA. So anyway, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.